Happy Sabbath, Breath of Life. Let's do that again. Happy Sabbath, Breath of Life. Praise God. We are gathered in the name of Jesus Christ. We are inspired by the Holy Spirit, and we are blessed by God. We come to worship the one and only Holy God. O oh God, our own God, how wonderful is your name in all the earth. Your majesty is the music of the starry skies. Yet even children of dust can sing your praises. In the name of the healer, the provider, and the enabler, let your gratitude and joy be made known. O oh God, our own God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Let's stand as we pray together and open our time of worship. Merciful Father, we are so grateful, Lord, that you are God. We're so thankful that we are here today, we are alive, we have breath in our lungs, and we can expel it for you, dear God, because you've been better than good to us. Father, in this time, it's your time. So we ask you, Lord, to take a seat and to be lavished with the praises of your children. We pray that everything from our, our mouths that we speak, that we sing, that we pray, that is preached, dear God, will be to your name's honor and glory, and that you might be glorified, your children will be edified, dear God, and that we will go out and spread your good news. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. You may be seated in God's presence. We want to welcome you to Breath of Life Fellowship today. What an amazing uh, opportunity we have to gather together in this place to exalt and glorify the Lord our God. Uh, we're so getting ready for a time of great worship. Uh, we want to have heartfelt praise. We want our songs to be robust and to rise as, as incense to our God. We want to welcome each and every one of you who are here in the house. And also those of you who are watching online, thank you for making Breath of Life Fellowship your place of worship today. We also want to finally welcome Pastor Damian Chandler all the way from Sacramento, California. We are going to be blessed today. Get ready for your time. Amen. Amen, amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. We are glad to be together in the house of the Lord today. Now is our time for us to meet and greet one another. So I encourage and invite you all to stand, to shake hands, smile, give a hug. Let's greet one another in Jesus' name.
Amen. I thought I was going to Amen. I thought I was going to have to jump in and help praise team, but they made it through. Hallelujah. They were standing on the promises. Now, in the month of April, we are focusing on families. Our families need to stand on the promises of God. If, if there is an institution in the world that's under attack, it's our families. Let, let me see the hands of those of you who are part of a family. It's all of us. Amen. And so we know that whatever we do, we need to work with God to preserve our families. And so today we will especially focus on families as we pray, as we seek God's face. I invite you to bow your heads. Dear gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we, we come to you today and approach you as our Father in heaven. And because you are our Father in heaven, God, we know that you love us with an everlasting love. There is nothing that we can do to stop you from loving us. And so, Father, we are come, we, we're coming today to accept that love, to accept your forgiveness of our sins, and to renew and to rebuild that our relationship with you. Lord, during this month, we are focusing on families. God, we, we thank you for our families. They, there may have been challenges and struggles and strife, but it, it, they, they, this is the first institution in which we understand what it means to love. And so, Father, we thank you for families. And we pause to pray for the families in this church, mothers, fathers, children, uncles, aunts, every part of the family needs prayer. And so God, we pray especially for our marriages. There are so many challenges that couples face today. And God, we just pray for the marriages in breath of life, that you will bless them that you will strengthen them, that each couple will place you at the center of that marriage. Lord, we pray for parents, whether they are single or coupled, Lord, we pray for them as they sacrifice all for the sake of their children. Give them strength. Give them perseverance. Give our parents patience and love and nurture. Help them to set the right example in the home. Help them to lead their children in prayer and study of your word so that each child will grow in, their, in wisdom and understanding of who God is and grow to love God as their Savior. Lord, we pray for our children, those who are away at college, God. We pray that you will place a special hand of protection on them. And God, we know that they are in the phase of life where they are preparing for what life will bring them. And so, God, we pray that you will nurture them, that you will fill them with your spirit and fill them with wisdom and perseverance and a drive to succeed. And God, whatever dreams they have, we pray that you will help them to fulfill those dreams. And those children who remain behind, God, we just pray that 
we will nurture them and we will love them and we will strengthen them and prepare them for the life that they must face tomorrow. And God, we know that in every family we have members who are sick. And so God, we pause right now to pray for our the members of our family who are ill. Please be with them. Please abide with them. Please heal them, God, and strengthen their faith. And God, we know that as we are in church today, we are a church family. And so, God, we pray for the Breath of Life Fellowship, and we pray for our pastor who leads us and guides us. God, we have goals. We have dreams. We have visions of what we can become as a church. Lord, as we pursue these things, help us to hold on to your unchanging hand. Help us to stand on your promises. And if we do that, we know that what we put our hands to will be successful. And God, in these last days, may we preach a gospel that will increase this family. And may we preach a gospel that will lift Christ up before the world and draw men and women to the foot of the cross. And may we be ready to meet you when you return. This we pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. I have the exciting privilege to introduce our speaker for our service today, and we have with us none other than Pastor Damian Chandler. Pastor Chandler is the senior pastor of the Capital City Seventh-day Adventist Church in Sacramento, California, and I'm so glad that he was able to come here today to travel from one end of the country to the other. He was born in Toronto, Canada, and raised on the island of Barbados by his parents, Michael and Grace Chandler. His ministry started in a small church house in the Bay of his home with only nine members. The burden of the ministry fell equally on the shoulders of all, and we know what that's like. It fell equally on the shoulders of all, including him as a 16-year-old teen. Realizing the need to add education to his passion for ministry, he began training at Oakwood, then Oakwood College, now Oakwood University, in 1996, where he graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in Theology. He later furthered his preparation by pursuing and attaining a Master's of Divinity degree from the Adventist Theological Seminary at Andrews University. In 2001, he was appointed youth pastor of Emerald City Church in Seattle, Washington, where he impacted um, the youth ministries there greatly, and they began to develop an urban youth ministry. He returned to Seattle in 2008 and was honored to take leadership at both Maranatha and Love of Life churches. In 2001, he traveled back to Alabama where he was humbled to serve as the associate pastor of the Madison Mission Seventh-day Adventist Church and he has been at Capital City since 2015. Pastor Chandler is passionate about ministry but he is even more passionate about family. After years of dedicated pursuit, God gave him the desire of his heart and a partner in life, his wife, Tansy Chandler, and they later expanded their partnership with the addition of their daughter, Zoe, and their sons, Salem and Levi, and together, 
they have been continuing to grow in the love and light and grace of God as a family and in their various areas of ministry. Pastor Chandler was also the keynote speaker at the most recent Pathfinder International Camporee, and so many people were exposed and had a chance to experience his ministry in powerful ways. But I could go on and on and on, but Pastor Chandler really is a friend and a big brother in ministry to me, so I'm glad to have him here. I'm glad that we all will get a chance to partake of the word that God has for us through him. So I ask that you would keep him in your prayers as we prepare to receive a word from him a little bit later on. Now, normally we would go into our praise and worship, but I have an exciting update to share with you all, Breath of Life, because let me tell you, God is moving in ways that we are trying to keep up. Many of you, uh, you know that last week we had our first church business meeting. And at that business meeting, we discussed the path that we are on to transition from being mission status to being church status. And so we talked about the vision that we believe that God has for us. We describe ourselves as a loving and Christ-filled welcoming, supportive community of refuge where we intentionally build relationships and we help strengthen the social, physical, mental, and spiritual lives of our members and everyone that we come in contact with. And we had a profound discussion about that and we're excited and moving forward. And as with, whenever we have conversations about where we're going, the unspoken elephant in the room is when are we going to find a permanent home? And those of you that have been with us from the beginning in 2015, you know the search that has been going on continuously, the, the rush to get bids and things together and properties shifting and moving before we could make a bid and all of those things. And unbeknownst to us, while we're having this meeting about the vision that God has for us, a church was placed on the market on Friday, April the 5th day before we had the meeting. So we found out early Monday morning, and so myself and Elder Dwayne and Elder John, we were texting frantically, Pastor Delahaye, he was texting us and we're all like, we gotta figure out, you know, the, a building's available, let's go. So we called our realtor agent on Monday and he set up an appointment for us on Tuesday. So we send out messages to the board, meet us 6 p.m. at 265 Seaside Avenue, we're going to look at this church and see if it would be a fit for us. So we gathered on Tuesday evening and walked up and down all around and evaluated the space and we prayed together and we're like, we're going to see if this is what God has for us. We're going to move forward by faith. So we sent out text messages Tuesday night calling another business meeting on Zoom on Wednesday. And then Wednesday, we shared the property with the church and we had another robust discussion going back and forth, looking and seeing if this is how God wants us to go. But we landed on, we're going to move forward and allow God to do what he does best which is make the way for us or shift us in another direction according to his will. So we voted at that time to place a bid for the church building. So we called our realtor late Wednesday night, Thursday got the paperwork together, Thursday afternoon we put the bid in, Friday the realtor told us that the agent has received our bid and has sent it to the sellers of the church and they will meet on Sunday to discuss whether or not they will accept the bid that we have placed. Amen. Now's the time for y'all to clap and say amen. Amen, amen. But I know many of you are like, okay, pastor, that's nice. What does the building look like? So we have pictures and video and a, a short video. So if only you can put that on the screen, you all can get a chance to look at our potential new home.
can see that is the building that we are looking at and we are excited we know that sometimes when we think of what the next step forward is going to be we don't know exactly what God has in store for us and so this was a wonderful and amazing surprise just to um, let you all know the house was listed for 799000 and to remain uh, market competitive we placed a bid and we voted to place a bid for 850000 for for the property and for those of you that are accountants and mathematicians we are working with the conference in terms of financing and I don't want to go into all of the details because we're remaining in a spirit of worship but we will definitely continue to have meetings to let you know how we move forward as a church and um, but we are excited to see what God has in store for us because many of you know we have been desiring and longing for a home a place that we can can call our own something where we can finally give our musicians and AV team a rest where they don't have to set up and break down pastor Chandler just said they set up the drum set every week I'm like every week they set it up they break it down sound system all of that a place where we can you know really do what we want to do to the space and you know give our children a sense of this belongs to them and just really being able to grow and to set up deeper roots here in the Stamford community so I want to encourage you all to pray I want you to know that we will keep you posted if by God's grace they accept our bid we will call another business meeting I want you all to know we're not going to tell you next week we bought the building and we did not inform you all so we will definitely keep you informed along the way but we are so excited to see what God has in store for us God has such great plans for us breath of life he is moving even when we don't see him moving opening doors when we don't see it and the way that he moves in our lives individually is exactly how he moves in our lives as a body of believers so let us continue to stay prayerful excited that God will lead us as he sees fit as we continue our desire to do the work of the Lord so it was very important that I shared that update with you all and so with that we're gonna go right into praise and worship because now we have one more reason to give God glory and honor and praise and I said <laughs> okay I'm being told to hold on a second <laughs> How are you, Pastor? I'm good. So, as you can tell, this week will be a special week for our pastor. And so we wanted to pause in the service to sort of celebrate with her. And so we have some very special presentations right now. We'll have them come forward, and then after they're done, uh, there is a short video that we want you to see. You, you have some friends who love you. That's all I'll say. All right. Pastor Holly, we want to celebrate you and our amazing pastor. Your birthday you, so much to us, and we want to express our gratitude and appreciation for your leadership, your dedication, and love for God inspires us to be better followers of Christ. We truly are blessed to have you as our pastor. We pray that God gives us a special blessing. We love you. Happy birthday, Pastor Holly. Amen. Thanks for being our pastor. Wishing you a happy, happy birthday. We love you, Pastor, pastor. Holly. Awesome. Okay. Well done, gentlemen. All right. Olu, don't don't leave your pass. Oh, you can have a seat and watch. Happy birthday, Mary. Girl, you know I love you so much. There's so much that I can say, but I cannot take up 
like a whole lot of time talking because I'm quite sure there are quite a few videos that you're going to see in this collaboration. But you know you are my girl. You know you are my boo. You are my forever partner ever since we were at Damazo when you came and knocked on my door and God showed us that we were covenant partners. Like that's deeper than us being calling each other sister or anything like that. I am so excited for this new decade of life that God has taken you into and I can't wait to see what he does because he's always, already done amazing things and I know that it's only going to get better. So happy birthday. I love you much, Mary. I love you much. Remember Luke 145. Love you. Happy birthday. Hey Mandy. I'm sitting here at the airport at South Bend, just leaving Andrews actually. I couldn't help but think of the great times we had there and the many memories. And to think you were only like what, 25 then? And you're all of 26 years old today. <laughs> Happy birthday, my friend. We love you lots. I hope you have a great time. Happy birthday, Mandy. I wish I could be there with you. I hope you are having a fabulous time. It's been such a blessing to know you for almost 12 years now and to see you coming into yourself creatively and expressing yourself and um, being, being you. I love to see how God has made space for you to use your talents and I just hope that God gives you all the desires of your heart. Love you, girly. Hey, Mandy. So sorry I can't be there to celebrate your 40th birthday, but there was no way that I was gonna miss out on this opportunity to let you and everyone know exactly what you mean to me. You have been one of the most instrumental people in my life. And out of all of the ways that I feel about Andrews University, and Barry and Springs and all of that stuff, you are among a small handful of people that made my time there worthwhile. Wow. And I would have never gotten to meet you and get to be a friend to you and you a friend to me had it not been for our paths crossing in a place that I could care less for. So, over the years, we've remained friends, we've had our ups and downs, but you have been a constant. And I can't tell you how invaluable that is to me. So although I can't be there in presence, may this video, uh, these words and these messages convey how much I love you, how much I appreciate you, how much you mean to me, how extremely proud I am to be your friend and to see you from both close and far in the ways that you have grown as a person. Thank you for trusting me with some of your most intimate uh, words as I've trusted you with some of my most intimate words. And I can't tell you again just how much I love you and I wish you nothing but the best as you move on to this next phase of your life, a brand new decade. May God continue to bless you. May God continue to work in and through you in the ways that he has been ever since the day he created you. Once again, I love you and we will talk soon. Okay, bye. Happy 40th born day anniversary to you, my friend, Amanda. Um, on this milestone birthday, I wanna take a moment to celebrate you and all the incredible moments um, that we shared as friends over the years and to honor the excellence you have shared with the world. Um, turning 40 is a significant milestone uh, marked with new chapters filled with wisdom, experience, and endless possibilities. So I want to tell you, may this special day be as, as, as uh, fabulous and extraordinary as you are. Embracing this new decade with open arms, knowing that the best is yet to come. Here's to creating even more unforgettable moments, achieving your dreams and cherishing every moment along the way. Cheers to 40 years of laughter, love and friendship. I am personally wishing you as well as Daniela and our boys a, a day filled with joy, 
surrounded by the people who love you the most. Again, happy birthday and God bless you. Hey, Mandy, happy birthday. Just wanted to say happy birthday for me and Chris. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here because he's on assignment doing some stuff. But I just wanted to say happy, happy, happy birthday to one of my best ride or die friends. I am so, so, so thankful to God, selfishly, that he gave you another year of life. And I know he's going to give you many more. Um, but I just pray that this year is fly. Randall said happy birthday. Fly fabulous, funky, fresh, fine, all of that, okay? I hope that, you know, this season in your life is full of excitement and joy because you definitely deserve it. So sorry that I couldn't be there to celebrate with you, but we will have our time. And please, y'all, don't hold this video against me. I did not get a chance to do my makeup, but I really, really, really wanted a chance to say happy birthday to my girl. Happy birthday, Amanda. I love you. Mandy, happy birthday, girl. I didn't know this, but your birthday is about the same time as mine. Today is April the 11th. My birthday is tomorrow, April the 12th. So I will be celebrating with you from a distance. I hope all is going well. And I have a word for you. God didn't give me this word. This word came straight from me. It's coming straight from me. My spirit is telling me to share this with you for what it's worth. If you are still single, and I don't know if that's the case or not, but if you are, you should leave up north and come down here to the south. In the south, my people, brothers down here, we appreciate things that maybe those up north brothers may overlook, take for granted. But down here, it will be appreciated. You won't last a week on the market <laughs> that much, I promise you. As you see, I'm still a fool, but this is your birthday shout out. So I salute you. Happy birthday. And send me a shout out back tomorrow. I'm petty like that. I want one back. Happy birthday again. Bye. Hi, Amanda. Corey and I just got together real quick to say how much we appreciate you and how much we love you as a friend. We want to thank you so much for being so awesome, for being able to listen to us, and for being such a great auntie to Karis. Indeed, Amanda. I remember meeting you uh, for real, for real in 2017 in Canada, and our relationship since then has just gotten tighter and tighter and tighter. I love the way that God is using you. I love the way that you are growing as a person in your ministry and the wonderful work that you are doing just in the lives of people. So just continue to be an awesome, awesome person. And may God give you another number <laughs> that you're turning today. Bye -bye. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Amanda, happy birthday. It is Jamel. In case you can't tell that it's me from the video. And that it's my face but uh so i'm sorry i can't be there i am i have a few things going on here that, that keep me kept me from coming but uh i just want you to know that i love you i appreciate your friendship um, and anytime you're in the city please holler at your boy i had a great time hanging out with you last time and i always enjoy our conversations i always walk away feeling spiritually fed and encouraged and so i appreciate the way that you love me as your friend and um, I look forward to a lifetime of friendship with you so be encouraged enjoy your birthday I love you and God bless hi Amanda I hope that you've enjoyed your birthday video I am so grateful for your friends of which of course I am number one because this was my idea um <laughs> actually technically it was John's idea elder your elder loves you and he invited me to come by and spend this Saturday with you. And I said, I can't go because I'm out of town, but I can do something that I know will put a huge smile on her face. Amanda, we love you. You are so loved and cherished by your community. I still remember being at Andrews with you and the pictures that we would take, the conversations we would have, the tears that would fall. Years of friendship, over 10 years at this point. And I am just forever, forever grateful. Our friendship has just grown stronger every year. And I feel blessed 
to be able to call you one of my closest friends. I love you. I, I cannot imagine what ministry would be like for me if you weren't here with me. And I'm grateful that I will forever have a sister in you. And a tiny shout out to Adia because she pulled out a lot of videos that I probably would not have been able to get by myself. So I'm happy that you are so loved that we all just came together and said we have to wish her a happy birthday. Because 40 years, like that is no small feat. And I know, I know. I know that life is gonna have its ups and downs and you're not as young as you used to be, but I want you to know that every step of the way we'll be there with you. We'll uphold you on the good days, on the bad days, on the great days, on the sad days. We got you forever. We love you and thank you for impacting all of our lives the way that you have. Amanda, you're incredible and we can't wait to see what God has in store for you for these next years. We love you, we love you, we love you. Happy birthday, Pastor Amanda Holly, from all of your friends and your loved ones and your bestie. Enjoy your Sabbath. Amen. Okay. Pastor, we just want to pause in our service to wish you a happy birthday. God has blessed you. I, I hope that when I turn 40, my friends will put together a video like this. This is, this is just tremendous. And I don't want to take any credit. This is Pastor Moda. She this is her idea, and um, it just tremendously blessed me, and I know it's been a blessing to you. And we are blessed to have you in this church as our pastor. Can the church say amen? amen. And we know that you have a heart for Jesus, and you have shared that with us, and we are looking forward to more years together, growing together as a family. And we just pray that God will continue to bless your ministry at the Breath of Life Fellowship. So on the eve of your birthday, we just wanted to pause and to wish you a happy birthday. And during our lunch, we're gonna open it up for the members to sort of share with you their feelings as well. So we just wanted you to be aware of that. So happy birthday, Pastor, and it's now time to lead praise and worship. God bless you. I'm trying to not cry because if I cry then I can't sing <sighs> thank you thank you thank you thank you mercy in Psalm 27 it says that the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army, listen to the word of the Lord, though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war may rise against me. In this, I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, and that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And then it goes on to say, For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me and he shall set me high upon a rock. Family, that is my testimony today. It was my testimony yesterday and the day before, and it will be my testimony tomorrow. And I know I'm not the only one that has that testimony. So I want you to join us as we sing that God is the joy 
and the strength of our lives. He is our all and all. We're going to be churchy today, so I need y'all to put your hands together. Oh, come on, Breath of Life. Put your hands together. Come on, come on.
that we need, anything that we need, whatever amount that we need, God says, I will fill you up. All you need do is come to me and ask me and I will fill you up. The word of God says that we present our bodies as living sacrifices. We present ourselves to God, broken and empty. And then he fills us with his Holy Spirit. Sing this song with me.
Come on, fill my cup. Fill my cup, Lord. Come on. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench. Come and quench this thirsting of my
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I would say before I get carried away, let me honor. <laughs> but when the Holy Spirit is in the building, all other things become secondary. It is an honor to be with you on this morning. Um, it is my honor and privilege to be here with you my first time to Connecticut. And I'd like to say that Connecticut is all right. It's all right. I've been to New York, never been to Connecticut. I don't know if it's the seas, the California and Connecticut together, but something, this place is all right. But more than Connecticut, I'd like you to stand with me and honor your pastor, my friend, Amanda Hawley. Can we, can we stand on our feet? It's okay to honor our pastor. Come on, put your hands together. Let her feel it. Let her know we honor you. There are those who are pastors because they can preach, and she can preach. And then there are those who are pastors because they like the power. I don't know. Maybe they have power that I have not seen. But there are those who are pastors because they love God and they love his people. And you have a pastor that loves God and loves his people. And for that, I think we should all be grateful. Amanda, thank you so much. And happy, happy birthday. I saw one or two gentlemen on the screen. Um, one guy looked really happy to say hello to you, so maybe you should give him a call after the service. Looking out, looking out, looking out. And uh, in Connecticut, we need to make sure that we find some brothers in Connecticut so that she does not head south. Someone say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's also put our hands together for our musicians. We're grateful. Thank you for filling the house with God's love. To the elder, thank you so much. And to all the members here. Um, yes. Uh, I bring you greetings from the Capital City Seventh-day Adventist Church in Sacramento, California and also from the bishop of my house. Her name is Tansy Chandler. She happens to be my wife, the most beautiful woman that I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Yup, she keeps it right. And also from my family. But in this moment, we are here for the word of God. So will you stand with me as we turn to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 27. Genesis chapter 27, and we're going to look at verses 36 through 40. Genesis chapter 27, verses 36 through 40, reads this way. And Esau said, is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and now look, he has taken away my blessing. And he said... Have you not reserved a blessing for me? Then Isaac answered and said to Esau, Indeed, I have made him your master. And all his brethren I have given to him as servants. With grain and wine I have sustained him. What shall I do for you now, my son? And Esau said to his father, Have you only one blessing, my father? Bless me. Bless me also. Someone in the congregation say, bless me also. Oh, my father. And Esau lifted his voice and he wept. Then Isaac, his father, answered him and said, Behold, your dwelling shall be on the fatness of the earth and all of the dew of heaven from above. By your sword you shall live and you shall serve your brother and it will come to pass. Someone say, and it will come to pass. When you become restless, that you shall break his yoke from around your neck. This is the word of the Lord. 
join me, I'm going to act like I'm at home. Raise your Bibles towards heaven, your iPads, your iPhones. Um, Androids are of the devil, but we will take it on today. Just raise it. Just raise it. Don't be embarrassed. Just raise it. Yes, yes, Elder, we're still praying for you. Just, just raise it. Just raise it. Repeat with me. I expect. Come on, breath of life with a loud voice. I expect God to do what he said he will do and nothing less with a triumphant voice I expect God to do what he said what he said what he said he will do and nothing less ah you may take your seat in the house of the Lord as I preach under the title break that yoke I was on my way to church. I was late, and it was in the fall, and it was raining. It rained, and the fields were muddy, and out in the field, I, can see, I could see a four-by-four, four, not any normal truck. The dude had the, the, the hydraulics. He had the big tires. He had the, the big muffler. He had the engine that was coming out, uh, uh, coming out of the hood like it couldn't fit. He, he had everything going on. He was doing donuts in the mud. And I looked, and this guy was just tearing up the field. But over on the side, kind of watching like a little brother, was this dude in a Toyota RAV4. Four-cylinder. He didn't have the big tires. He didn't have the muffler. He didn't have the engine. He didn't have the hydraulics. But it was like almost like if joy just overtook him. And he pressed on the gas and went out in the field. And for the first two seconds, he was doing donuts too. Then all of a sudden, his wheels started to spin. And he started to get deeper and deeper in the mud until he found himself stuck. And no matter how hard he pressed and revved that engine, he was still stuck. I, I saw him. He tried to change gears, but he was still stuck. The more gas he, put, he gave, the more he sunk. And then he found himself stuck, revving, and going nowhere. He was stuck, and he was stuck, and he would remain stuck until something or someone came and pulled him out. Esau was stuck. Jacob did what he did. He tricked his brother, selling his destiny for a bowl of soup and robbed his brother of his blessing. Esau is stuck. And it was foul. It was wrong. It was evil. And from when, where Esau was sitting, he could see that Jacob was going to get away with it. He was going to leave town. He was going to get married. He was going to buy a house. He was going to have some children. He would post piss pictures on Instagram of his kids every day. Everyone would call him blessed. huh? Uh, the pictures of Esau, he would see him, see his status and his birthright and his blessing. His kids would benefit. They would afford to go to college without loans. They would get cars for their 16th birthdays. They would have large allowances with extravagant shopping sprees. And here is Esau sitting, watching Jacob just move on while Esau is stuck. He's stuck and he's mad and it hurts. And the hurt was deep because he was hurt by family. There ain't nothing like being hurt by your own family. The ones that are supposed to love you and protect you and provide for you and support you when they harm you and abuse you and misuse you. There's nothing like getting hurt by family. That stuff hurts. <laughs> And, and no matter how hard you spin them wheels or how hard, how much you press the gas, no matter how hard you try to get yourself out of the mud, no matter how many degrees you attain or money you amass or status you will claim, you are stuck. You are stuck because of what daddy did. You are stuck because of what mommy didn't do. You are stuck because of the words of your sister. You are stuck because of the fight with your brother and no 
matter what you've tried, no matter what you've done, or how many leather couches you've sat on, you are still stuck. We can tell that you are stuck because of your attitude. We can tell that you are stuck because of your affect. We can tell that you are stuck because of your altitude. We can tell that you are stuck because of your aptitude. You are stuck and you are stuck because of what your family did. You're stuck. You're stuck and you're hurt. And I came here this morning to tell you it's okay to be hurt. In fact, you have a right to be angry. In Genesis 27, 34, it says that when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried. He stuck. He, it was, the Bible says it was an exceedingly bitter t- cry and tear. Can you imagine hearing him bellow as his father says, I ain't got nothing for you. He's stuck. Ephesians 4, 26 says, hey, 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 you. The one that that your family messed up and did over you. Yes, you. It says, be angry. That's what Ephesians says. It's a command. It says, be angry. Just don't sin. The problem is that it's not the fact that you are angry. Because God gives us permission to be angry. It's a command. Be angry. It's when the hurt becomes anger and the anger becomes hate. That becomes the issue. Can we talk about family this morning? Can we talk about family this morning? Because hate always leads to murder. Hate leads to murder in two ways. Number one, if you're taking notes, please, please write it down. It says, hate ends up in you murdering your relationship with others. John, 1 John 3.15 says, everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. You try to murder the person who hurt you. It becomes your life goal. You want them to hurt as much as you hurt. You want them to feel what you feel. In your head, if you could just get them to feel what you felt, or hurt the way you hurt, then you would feel better. But I don't know about you, I've tried it, I've tried it, and when I make them hurt, I just, I still feel hurt. When I make them, when I make them cry, I'm still crying. Does anybody know that vengeance just doesn't work? That's the reason why the Lord says vengeance belongs to who? To him. You murder their character, you murder their dreams, you kill them over and over in your mind and in your heart, You become consumed by them. They've moved on, but your hate leaves you stuck. Hate also murders your relationship with God. 1 John 4.20 says, If someone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God who he has not seen? We're talking about family today. We're talking about family hurt. We're talking about being stuck. How about Matthew chapter 5 verse 23 through 24 reads this way. If you come with your offering... And remember that you have aught with your brother, leave your gift and go away and first be reconciled. In other words, what God is saying to us is that when you have hurt, family hurt, your worship won't wash that hurt away. You need to go back and make it right. Touch the person next to you and say, hey, you need to go back and make it right. You need to make it right. You need to make it right. Esau is stuck. He's full of hate. And he knows it. So what does Esau do and what should we do when we have family pain that hurts us and when we feel stuck? The first thing that Esau does, I just want to praise God. I could run all over this sanctuary for this, is that he goes directly to his father. 
The Bible tells us that when he finds out what Jacob has done, he doesn't go to his mother, he doesn't, he doesn't go talk to his friends, he doesn't post uh, ugly messages on Instagram or on Facebook, he goes directly to his father and he comes, ooh, he comes into his father's presence with all of his hurt and all of his disappointment and all of his anger and all all of his tears and yes all of his hate why because when I feel hurt the safest place for me to be is in the presence of the father and is there anyone that knows that you can go into God's presence hurt and angry and mad and God does not judge you he doesn't tell you to get it together he doesn't tell you to wipe your tears we serve a God that accepts us when we're hurt when we're hurt by our family the first place that we need to go to is to the presence of the father can I go a little bit deeper because when we go into the presence of a father I remember one time I was at home and my daughter was just hurt she was just hurt. She was hurt so bad. And my daughter came home and she was crying and she just crawled into my arms. And I, I knew that there was nothing that I could do to fix it. There was nothing I could do to make it right. But somewhere in my mind, I thought that there might be a little bit of power and comfort in my arms. So even though the situation uh, did not change, she was in the presence of her father and in my presence just my presence made her feel better I wonder if there's anybody in the sanctuary on today that knows what it's like that the presence of the Lord just makes you feel better the presence of God just being in his presence can make everything better even though nothing changes He's in the presence of his father. He brings all of his pain into the father's presence. I, I want to talk to parents in the room today. You know, sometimes your kids don't need your wisdom. Sometimes they don't need your advice. All they need to know is that no matter where you go, no matter what you do, you will always be my son. You will always be my daughter. Addicted, but you're my daughter. Strung out, but you're my son. There is nothing that you can do to cause me to walk away from you. You are not my project. You are my family. First, he goes running to the father. Then he begs for a blessing. He says, what about me? This ain't fair. I see him prospering. He is happy. What about me? They've moved on. They're happy. But what about me? I'm still hurting. I'm still broken. What about me? Have you ever been there where every time you opened up your mouth, all that came out is, God, what about me? Have you forgotten? Have you, do you have any blessings for me? Is there a promise for me, God? What about me? You've got to have something left for me, Daddy. Can you please bless me too? What? Esau is asking God to do is he's asking God to give him the blessing that he has lost. He's asking for that blessing because he thinks it's the only thing that, can, that he can receive to heal the hurt and the hate. Give me what you gave him. Bless me like you blessed him. Treat me the way that you treated him. If you would just give me what you gave him, I won't feel the hurt anymore. But Isaac does not shoo him away. He does not remind him that he actually created the mess that he found himself in. Hello. He does not tell him that it's no big deal. Isaac sees his son's anguish and hears his plea. 
I just want to thank God right now for a God that sees my anguish and hears my plea that when I am hurt by family and I go into the presence of my father, he knows my pain intimately. He understands my pain. He understands the depth of my hurt. Isaac could see that his son was consumed with his hate. And the only person his hate was hurting was himself. Genesis 27, 39 through 40 rec records the response of Isaac to his son. Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, Behold, your dwelling shall be of the fatness of the earth. You're going to be blessed. You're going to be taken care of. And the dew of the heaven from above, by your sword you shall live and you shall serve your brother and it shall come to pass when you become restless that you shall break his yoke from around your neck. Notice that Isaac does not bless Esau with Jacob's blessing. Isaac says, I've got a blessing that's Tailor made just for you. It's not the one you want, hallelujah, and it's not the one that you asked for, but it's the blessing that you need. Oh my God. I, I'm so grateful that as a parent, I understand that I don't always need to give my kids what they want or what they ask for, but as, as daddy, I understand intimately what they need. And as it is for me and my children, so it is for our heavenly father. I know that some of y'all are sitting out there and you, you hurt mad because God didn't do what you asked him to do. But is there any wise saint in the sanctuary on today that could raise your hands in the aftermath looking over your shoulder and you could say thank God that you didn't answer that prayer. Thank God that you didn't give me what I asked for. I bless you God because you were wise enough to say no. He gives him his own blessing, one that is tailor-made for where he is and what he had been through. It was a blessing that was meant, Amanda, to get him unstuck. So what does Isaac give him? Well, Isaac says, number one, you are going to be a slave to your brother. What kind of blessing is that? The Hebrew word used there is ta'abod. It means that you will expend energy. It means that you will expend time. It means that you will expend attention. Listen, listen. Unforgiveness makes you a slave to the person who hurt you. Unforgiveness makes you a slave to the person who hurt you? you? You expend time and energy and attention. Your focus is on them. You're always on their pay. Unforgiveness within a family causes you to expend all of your energy and you become a slave to the person who hurt you. Become a slave to the pain and a slave to the hurt. And do you know how you know? Because every time you open your mouth to talk about family, you just talk about pain. Hurt. What so-and-so did and what auntie did and what they didn't do and what they said and what they didn't say. And every time I hear that, I say, there goes a slave. There goes a slave. A slave to pain and a slave to hurt. Ta'abod, you're expending your energy and your time and your attention on the person who hurt you. See, what that person in your family did to you was a homicide. But not forgiving them is suicide. You are killing yourself. And you know the crazy thing about it? They moved on with their life and they ain't even paying no attention. <laughs> they, they gone. They gone, gone. They move, gone, in the city, in Manhattan, living their best life while you are sulking in a corner. I know that family hurt hits deep, but please don't match their homicide with your suicide. You are killing yourself. Touch the person next to you and say, you're killing yourself. 
He says that you are going to be a slave, but then he says you will struggle. In other words, this is not going to be easy. It's going to be tough. It's not going to be peaches and cream. It's, it, I'm, I'm going to do this, but it probably won't go the way that you want. This is going to hurt. The reason why is that the process of healing from family hurt always involves pain because the hurt is intimate and close. The process of healing involves pain. You're going to face pain. You're going to go through pain. It's going to be uncomfortable. And to the person that I'm preaching on today, I'm preaching to today, just because it's uncomfortable does not mean that it's not right. It does not mean that you need to quit. This is a part of the pain is a part of the process. But. Can you look at the person next to you and say, there's a butt in the text. <laughs> there's, a butt, there's a butt in the text. Every time I see butt in the word of God and things are not going well, I feel like throwing up my hands and just shouting, hallelujah, there's a butt in the text. He says, but it will come to pass. That's a promise. That's not a question. It's a promise. When you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, the Bible says you will become restless, restless, restless. God is going to get you unsettled in your anger. You won't be able to be silent anymore. You will not be able to avoid that family member. You will want to go back to Christmas holidays. You will want to show up at the house for the gatherings. You will become restless. You will be tired of friends' anniversaries and friends' thanksgivings. You'll want to be around your flesh and blood. I'm praying that someone in this sanctuary that has been avoiding your family, that you will experience a butt in your life and you will start to be blessed with restlessness and a feeling like, I need to go back home. I need to be reconnected with my family he will make you restless and then finally he says and you will break the yoke of hatred from around your neck the yoke There's certain words in the Bible that have so much power. And if you don't spend time studying them, you'll miss the power of the text. Yoke. I didn't know what a yoke was. I said, like, God, I'm breaking egg yolks from around my neck. That just don't, just don't sound like what kind of yoke you talking about? You know, I just... So I started to do some studying on the yoke. The yoke was a large piece of heavy wood that went around the neck of the animals. Uh, that yoke kept your head low so that you could, oh my God, so that you could not look up and see what was ahead of you. Uh, see, the, the reason why they kept the head low is because when you kept the animal's head low, the animal could not see that there was green grass ahead. All the animal would see is what was in front of his next foot. The animal was unable to raise, hallelujah, his head because his neck was low. Not only did the weight of the yoke keep your head low, but the weight of the yoke would tie you to another animal. And listen to this. And if the animal that you were yoked to, oh my God, <laughs> if the animal that you were yoked to, Amanda, was stronger than you were, what would happen because you were yoked to them is that you would walk around in circles. Oh my God. If you are yoked to something that is stronger than you, you do not have the ability to walk forward. You do not have 
the ability to control yourself to move to the left or the right when you are yoked to something that is stronger than you the only thing that can happen is for you to walk around in circles see y'all thought that the bible was trying to curse you when the bible says do not be unequally yoked when you are unequally yoked that relationship will just walk around in circles and you're wondering why you can't prosper because what you're yoked to is stronger than you and it's got you walking around in circles there's some there's some people in the house that are yoked to people that are stronger than you their sin is stronger than your salvation and they got you walking around in circles you ain't going nowhere and you're wondering why your life is not progressing it's because you're yoked you're wondering why you can't get past the pain it's because you're yoked you're wondering why you seem not to be blessed it's because you're yoked to something that's stronger than you but it's not just being yoked to someone it's also being yoked to something. Amanda, there are some people in this house on today that are yoked to hate. And the hate that you got in your heart is stronger than the love that God that you have. And because you're yoked to hate, you keep walking around in circles. And here's the problem. When the mother is yoked and when the father is yoked, then the children will be yoked. You are yoking your children to the same thing that yoked you. Ask me how I know. Do you know how many conversations I've had with kids who don't know anything about some adult? They never met them before, but they hate them. Why? Because the yoke was put around their neck at the dinner table. We passed on that hate. We passed on that anger. We passed on our issues to our children rather than giving them an inheritance of glory and blessing and happiness and joy. We passed gossip and anger and pain and resentment and they don't even know those people but they hate them just like you did. Why? Because that's the inheritance that you gave them. You gave them a yoke. Gave them a yoke, a yoke of hurt and hate. And then when you look at your kids, you see them walking around in circles. And you're asking, why are they walking around in circles? It's because they got a yoke on their neck. And the yoke is tying them to something that's more powerful than they are. I'm in the last five weeks of a marriage and family degree, therapy degree. And I've sat across the, across the office from young people, tried to commit suicide, young people on every kind of drug that you could ask about, young people who are, who are walking around in circles. And it never fails that when I start to dig into their lives and they start to share, it goes back to the family. It goes back to what mommy didn't say. It goes back to what daddy didn't say. It goes back to daddy not being present. It goes back to daddy being in the house but too busy to go to the baseball game. It goes back to things that were said when they were five and six and seven and now they're 37 and 45 and 66 and they can't shake it because they're yoked. When we talk about the family, we're not talking about any small thing. We're talking about the future and the destiny of people that is yoked to stuff that happened in their home. But the Bible says, when you become restless, Isaac was saying to Esau, you've allowed yourself to become a slave to your brother's pain. You've allowed that hurt to yoke around your neck and burden your shoulders and keep your head down and stop you from seeing your future. Stop you from seeing how blessed you are in your present. That yoke owns your mind. 
But one day, when you become restless and sick and tired, you'll realize that the only person who hate is hurting is you. You will not allow it to rule you anymore. You will break it off. You will tear it off. You will snatch it off. And no one can do it but you. Listen, family. God is waiting for you to take responsibility for the yoke that you have around your neck. You have to decide. It is up to you. You got to say, God, I'm ready to break this yoke. Forgiveness is really powerful. And later this evening, that's exactly what I'm going to talk about. How do we break the yoke? Forgiveness. But as I conclude, if you want to know what a, some person who has forgiven looks like, look at the life of Esau. Genesis chapter 33, Jacob is making his way home after wrestling with God. I'd like to suggest to families that are experiencing difficulty that before we wrestle with each other, we need to wrestle with God first. Hallelujah. He's on his way home and Jacob has wrestled with God, but Jacob is afraid because he knows that his brother is angry. He left him angry. Jacob is coming to Esau and he sends all these people ahead of him to make sure that Esau is okay. And Esau says, what's, what's all this about? When Jacob finally meets Esau, he bows down low. And he was like, oh, Esau, I'm so sorry. And this is years later and Esau says, man, what you doing? Get up. And he says, Esau, he, he says, Esau, I, let me give you back. Let me pay you back. Let me give you back what I owe. And Esau was like, son, you can forget all of that. He was like, have you seen how blessed I am? Can you see? These are my children and these are my wives and this is my land and these are my servants. God did not forget about me while he was blessing you. While you were prospering in another land, God didn't just leave with you. God was here with me. I don't need you to apologize. I'm blessed. Amen. You owe me nothing. We are good. Because while God was blessing you, he didn't forget about me. Amen. Amen. I'm blessed. I want to close with this idea. I, my dad and I had some friction when I was younger. He did some things that kind of followed me in life and I realized when I got married that this thing was still bothering me. Holy Spirit said, you need to talk to your dad. And I said to God, there's a lot of things that I will do, but there's some things that I'm not going to do. I'm not going to talk to him. Then finally, one day, the Holy Spirit says, you got to talk to your dad. So I did. And I said, hey, dad, um, listen, uh, I needed to talk to you about something, and it's really bothering me, and I've been holding on to it for a long time, and you did this, and you did that, and it's really bothering me. And you know what my dad said to me? He said, son, I didn't know that what I did hurt you. I had no idea. But listen to what he says. He says, but I asked God for forgiveness for that a long time ago. And he said, and I know that God has forgiven me. Check what he said next. And I ask you for your forgiveness. But if you choose not to forgive me, I'm going to be okay. Because I know I, I got God. 
God's forgiveness. And I made things right with him. He said, I want to make things right with you. But if that doesn't work out, I'll be cool. Because I won't live with your yoke around my neck. I wonder if there's someone in the sanctuary on today who family life has not been the best to you. You've been hurt over and over again. You've been walking around angry, holding on to stuff. You're just restless. You're ready to be free from it. And it's not just others, it's me as well. So I'm going to be the first to stand because I got some family stuff that I need to break from around my neck. If that's you, you want to finally say to God, God, today is the day. I want to be done with this. I want you to make me over again. Will you stand on your feet with me? forgiveness to those who have hurt us you're you're challenging us that our hurt is only hurting us and you're calling us away from the suicide of hurting ourselves and to extend the power of forgiveness to those around us and to our families we want to see healed families we want to see families that are brought back together in spite of the hurt of our past you can break the yoke from around our families necks and you can bring us back together again I pray for that one, that two, that person that is struggling with family issues. And we're asking you in Jesus' name that you will give them power to stop spinning their wheels. That you will get them unstuck so that they can forgive, lift their heads, and move into the future that you have in store for them. Thank you so much. We honor you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you touch the person around you and say, I am wearing that yoke no more. I'm not wearing that yoke no more. Tell someone else, I won't wear that yoke no more. you came to church today aren't you glad you came to this church today it was truly a blessed day pastor Chandler we want to thank you for making the cross-country trip the message and even your ministry with music was phenomenal and you said this is your first time in Connecticut this should not be your last time and make sure that uh, you bring Sister Tansy and the, and the children are with you next time. Connecticut in the summer is a wonderful place to be. So God bless you. And I know Capital City is your, your home church, but it's okay for this to be your second home. Amen. So thank you so much for blessing us today. A few quick announcements. Uh, we will have a special Wednesday night prayer meeting on Wednesday continuing with our theme of families anxiety and depression in the family anxiety and depression in the family we will have sister Natalie Marshall will be the guest presenter so please join us 7 30 p.m. on zoom April 17th this Wednesday also we have more after we eat lunch downstairs, we do have lunch, amen? 
After lunch, we will hear more from Pastor Chandler as we continue to discuss the family. Uh, we are going to collect the tithe and offering a little differently today. When you walk out, you see Sister Barbara, wave Sister Barbara, just drop off your tithe and your offering there. Please stand with me and let us be dismissed. Father, it is such a blessing to be able to worship and to praise you, to come with other believers and to magnify your name. Thank you for being in the midst of our praise today, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would move in our lives, that you would send down the anointing of your Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us and lead us, Lord. We pray that we would get everything that we needed out of this wonderful message and that we would be more like you. We pray that you would bless the food we are about to receive and the tithe and offering we are about to collect. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. And there is another group that is waiting to use the sanctuary, so we're going to quickly move out. And, and don't forget Barbara's there, and then we will have lunch downstairs.